Welcome back to episode 4 or 3, I think, I can't really remember, of the horror game series. Today's episode, we're going to be making a camera bobble script. Now, if you've ever played a horror game before, you've probably noticed that whenever you walk, there's a little shaking sort of movement that goes on with the camera, which makes it appear more realistic, because when you walk in real life, your head kind of moves around because your legs are moving, and it just kind of adds that little realistic bob to your camera. And that's what we're going to be making today because ultimately it's going to make our horror game more realistic and that's what we want. So let's go over to starter player right here and then inside of starter character scripts we're going to click on the plus icon and add in a local script. The local script is great because we're going to be putting this camera bobble on the client and so we use a local script for the client. So I'm just going to start up here at the top with some services right here. I like to declare a comment just to keep my code nice and clean but this is completely optional. Let's go ahead and start off with run service. We're going to be needing this to run a certain function every single frame. So we're going to say local run service will be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks run service just like this and after that we can also get the player service as well so this will be game get service players just like this and the player service this is this player service right up here in the explorer which holds all of our players as you can see that's me right there that's all the services that we're going to be needing so let's create a brand new comment for our variables and we're going to start off getting our local player and this is going to be equal to players dot local player now our local player, or this player right here, this is going to be the player that spawns in with our local script. Then we're also going to need to go ahead and get the player's character, so we're going to say local character will be equal to player.character, or we need to say player.character added colon wait because sometimes the player's character takes a long time to load in and we just want to make sure that's properly loaded in beforehand so that way we can go ahead and get it and have no problems whatsoever so if it already is loaded in then it'll just say player.character or it's simply going to wait until the character gets added now let's just go ahead and say local humanoid which is the i guess it's sort of like the brain of a human to a roblox character this controls everything like the speed of the character, the health of the character, stuff like that. And this is going to be equal to character colon wait for child capital H humanoid. After that, we're going to say local camera will be equal to game dot workspace dot current camera. And this is the camera that the player will be using when they join the game. And that's all we need for our variables. So let's go down here and create a brand new comment for our functions here. And we're going to create a brand new local function called bobble. Now when we press enter, it's going to put a little end right there at the end of our function here. And we're going to say if humanoid.moveDirection is not equal to vector3.new. So what this is saying is that if the character is moving, then what we're going to say is that the local strength of our camera bobble is going to be how strong we want the shake to be of our screen. I'm going to set this at a number like 8 or so, but you can make this whatever you want to. Of course, the higher the number, the stronger it's going to be, the lower the number, the weaker it's going to be. So I'm just going to leave this at 8, and it's completely adjustable, so we can change it later if we need to. Now we're going to say local shake will be equal to, and this is going to be math.sign, parentheses, we're going to put tick right here, which returns the amount of time in seconds since the Unix epoch according to this device's time, which if you don't know what that means, I will be releasing a tick tutorial in the future where you can learn much more about tick. But for now, it's simply a way of measuring the time. So we're going to do tick times strength, and this will be divided by roughly 10. And you can feel free to adjust this number at the end here and this is going to be the shake range after that we simply say camera dot c frame will be equal to camera dot c frame times i guess we can actually just say times equals c frame dot angles math dot rad not random rad or radial and this will be our shake right here and then math dot rad again with our shake inside of here and then a zero for the z-axis and that should be all that we need to do for here I know it might look a little complicated I'll zoom out for you guys but that's the function right there so what this is basically doing is we're taking the strength variable right here then we're taking then we're taking the time times the strength 
We're dividing it by 10 to get a specific number that we can use to determine the C-frame of our camera. And I'll show you guys what that will do in a few seconds. But for now, we need to say run service render stepped connect function. Well, not connect function. We can actually just connect our bobble right here. Now let's go ahead and click on play. You'll notice that we aren't moving right now, so the bobble isn't in effect. But if I start moving, you can see that it's actually going to change the way my camera is moving. Like you can see that I'm not moving my camera at all, but it's making it look like my camera is moving, which is pretty cool and fairly realistic. But one thing I've realized that when we hold our flashlight out, we can't really see our arm, which doesn't look very realistic. Now I'm going to show you guys a way you can fix that if you would like to. So let's click on stop and go back into our script. So in order to do that, let's just go ahead and create a whole new local function. Let's just call this make arms visible. I don't know, something like that. And this will take our base part as a parameter. So if base part and base part colon is a parentheses quotation marks base part. Oops, not base part, base part. Then we're gonna check if not elf if base part dot name does not equal to head. Then we want to make sure that the player's head doesn't become unvisible or not invisible. I mean to say. Then we're gonna say base part dot local transparency modifier like this will be equal to base part dot transparency. And then we're also going to say base part dot change colon connect function. And this will be the property that changed. We're going to check part base part. I mean dot local transparency modifier equals to base part dot transparency. And we actually didn't need this property parameter right here so we can get rid of that. So what the local transparency modifier is is that it doesn't actually affect the base parts transparency until the player is in a certain radius with their camera and let me explain so if we were to go to starter player right here and change the lock first person to classic real quick so that way we can actually zoom in and out so you'll notice that with me being in first third person right here i am perfectly visible but if I go ahead and zoom in, you'll notice that I become invisible because of that local transparency modifier, which affects how my player is viewed inside of my camera. But if I zoom out a little bit, you can say I'm slightly invisible. And if I zoom out more, I become fully visible, which is interesting. Now let's go back into our local script. In order to make our arms actually visible, we need to loop through all of our base parts. So we're going to say for underscore comma. Let's do base part in pairs character colon get children do we're just gonna do our make arms visible with our base part right here so this is gonna loop through everything inside of our character and it's just going to call our make arms visible function on that base part let's go ahead and click on play here and you'll see what i mean so joining the game you can see that our body is fully visible now one thing you'll notice is that our camera needs to be slightly adjusted because right now we can't really see anything with our character's torso right here. So let's go ahead and click on the stop button real quick. And we can make this fairly simple just by adding a very simple line of code. That's going to be humanoid.camera offset will be equal to vector3.new parentheses 0, 0, 0.2 on the y axis and then probably negative 1 for the z axis. Let's go ahead and click on play here, and you'll see what I mean. So now when we zoom in, you'll notice that our torso is no longer completely taking over our view here, and when we look down, we can still see our body. Now of course, depending on your avatar, you may need to change how your camera looks, and I think I'm going to change mine a little bit more. So I'm going to change mine probably like 1.3 or 4, I'm going to go up a little bit more the camera offset maybe like three five let's go ahead and click on play here and we can try this one out so this one it looks much better to me and once we add in our own animations and everything it will look much better 
and now you can see us actually holding the flashlight and this looks much more realistic anyways guys if you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as i did please make sure you like subscribe and comment down below i hope you have a fantastic day and goodbye Thank you.